Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well. Before we get started, let's get the business out of the way. Smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, make sure and share the video, and don't forget to comment below. We'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get started. The 2021 playoffs are literally just around the corner now, with about 10 more games left to go for each team. The top three teams in the West, in terms of regular season standings, are going to either be the Jazz, the Suns, or the Clippers, who are locked up in a tight three-way race for seeding purposes. The Lakers, on the other hand, have definitely taken a hit, because their two superstars were more or less inactive due to injuries. The Golden State Warriors are currently swapping between the ninth and 10th seed, and are definitely within striking distance of that coveted sixth seed which is currently held by the Dallas Mavericks, but not that fifth seed, which is currently held by the Lakers. How good are the Golden State Warriors looking right now? And what exactly is their playoff rotation gonna look like in about two weeks time? Guys, let's dive right into that. Each team has a roster of about 15 players, but when the postseason starts, teams start trimming that number down to about eight or nine players, which can be tough, especially when you have a lot of players who have a similar skill set and who are playing right around the same level. First off, in order to judge how good the dubs are looking, we have to look at their potential playoff opponents. Based on today's standings, it'll either be the Utah Jazz or the Phoenix Suns. The Jazz's playoff rotation is most likely gonna consist of Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, Joe Ingles, Boyan Bogdanovich, Mike Connolly, Royce O'Neal, Jordan Clarkson, and Derek Favors. They're currently the number one seed in the entire league, but have split the series with the Dubs in their two matchups so far. The Suns' playoff rotation is most likely going to be Devin Booker, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, Torrey Craig, Mikael Bridges, Jay Crowder, Cameron Johnson, and Dario Saric, a team that is definitely on the rise. And they beat the Warriors twice so far this regular season. And man, they're surprising everyone with how well they're performing. Honestly, Despite how well both these teams are performing in the regular season, no one really fears these two teams. Despite having the number one and two seed in the entire league, they're not even in the top three when it comes to Vegas championship odds. I think the Warriors are gonna match up decently well with these two teams in the playoffs and may even have the advantage. Let's take a little deep dive into this. James Wiseman and Clay Thompson are out due to injuries. So of course, they won't be in any rotations. The Golden State Warriors starting five is looking to be number one, Steph Curry, number two, Juan Toscano Anderson, number three, Andrew Wiggins, number four, Draymond Green, number five, Kevon Looney. The bench here is gonna be a little tough because the Warriors are filled with guards who can shoot. First off, it's a no-brainer that Kelly Oubre Jr. is most likely gonna take that six-man role. He's way too good of a player to be taken out of the rotation. Next off, Competing for that six-man role is going to be Jordan Poole, who has shown flashes of being elite, as well as showing flashes of that inexperience. Guys, here's where things become a little tricky, when we start talking about that eighth spot, and possibly that ninth spot. I'd like to watch a little more of these last ten games, and in particular, I need to see more of Gary Payton II. He's played very sparingly, and for good reason. He was in the G League all season, and he's just not that experienced in Steve Kerr's small ball system quite yet. Also, his career three-point percentage doesn't quite make any coach want to pop him in for extensive minutes. But in saying all this, however, Golden State and getting an opportunity as that three drops in. In the minutes that Peyton did play so far this season with the Dubs, he's been nothing short of awesome. He plays great defense, cuts well without the ball, and surprisingly, he's been shooting his open threes with a decent percentage. I know, I know, it's been in limited minutes and such, and yeah, he's quite undersized on the court. But I have to say I like what I've been seeing so far. That's probably why the Warriors signed him to that second 10-day contract. Here's what Steve Kerr recently said of Gary Payton II. He was fantastic. My assistant coaches have been telling me that when we put him in, we're not going to want to take him out because of his defense. Now I see it. He was all over the place. Great hands, great anticipation. Who knows what's going to happen rotation-wise, but he was very, very impressive. It's going to be really tricky as well. Give him more minutes to see if he's worthy of being in that rotation because the Warriors are within striking distance of that sixth seed and there's no room for errors pretty much. And if you insert Peyton in, as good as he's played so far, it's a little bit of an unknown as far as what he'll produce. 
In the last game against the Kings, Peyton did score seven points in five minutes. Sounds really good. So we'll have to see what he produces tonight against the Mavericks. P.S. He's nearing the end of that second 10-day contract. I hope he gets signed. If not, I am definitely going to chug a beer. Or two. Next off after Peyton, this leaves Michael Mulder, Kent Bazemore, and Damian Lee. They're all fighting for that ninth playoff rotation spot. If Kerr does allow a ninth, and it's tricky, they all play the same position, can shoot the three ball well, and have all had hot streaks this season, and quite a few cold streaks as well. If I were a head coach, I'd probably leave Mulder off the rotation, and switch between Bazemore and Lee to play the halves, and then keep them in if they got that hot hand for the night. So there we have it, Curry, Green, Wiggins, JTA, and Looney for the starting five. Then Kelly Oubre, Jordan Poole, and a combination of Bazemore and Lee, with perhaps Gary Payton as well, depending on how he performs the rest of the season. If you ask me, I'm pretty sure neither the Suns nor the Jazz are going to want to play against the Dubs come the first round. First of all, Steph Curry is definitely going to be the best player on the court. I mean, with what he's been able to do so far this season, he's quite possibly the best player in the NBA this season. Steph down to two. Stop. He backs all the way up. Oh, this is amazing. Curry for three. And Steph. Second of all, the player with the most assists per game is also on the Warriors roster. I'm talking about Draymond Green. Wiggins and Kelly Oubre have both had decent stretches this season, where they were playing like all-stars. And who knows if the playoff intensity will get them to focus better and produce better. Also, something that isn't said enough about Looney is his knack for the game. He always seems to be in the right place at the right time. The same can be said about JTA. He's not the most athletic guy, nor the most skilled guy, but he's almost always making the right play. The Warriors need to make signing JTA this offseason a priority. Jordan Poole is truly developing before our eyes, and I guarantee he'll be a major X factor in the playoffs. The Warriors' rotation looks pretty scary, and if Gary Payton II can be what he's shown us so far, it's going to look even scarier. Here's what Draymond Green had to say about the guard recently. He's always had a defensive reputation, and he showed that tonight. Four steals, one block, and nine minutes of play? He was great out there. That's his first real opportunity since coming in on a 10-day. He took advantage of it. Anytime you got dog like he's got, you give yourself a chance. So yeah, against the Suns or the Jazz, I'm going to say the Warriors will win either of those series in six or seven games. The Warriors are going to have the best player on the floor, the best coach, and they've got more experience. The only team I'm a bit worried about in the West is the Clippers. Pretty much everyone in their playoff rotation is going to be shooting over 40% from beyond the arc. And they have Kawhi Leonard and maybe, just maybe, a playoff P. I'm still hoping they'll face either the Mavs or the Lakers in the first round because as good as the Clippers are, I see these two teams having the edge. The Denver Nuggets would have been, in my opinion, a clear favorite over the Clippers. But man, unfortunately, Jamal Murray had that season-ending injury. Guys, the only thing left to do in order to improve this roster before the playoffs arrive is to get Steve Kerr to channel a bit of his inner San Antonio Spurs. Let me correct myself. Actually, I mean, if he could channel a bit of his inner Greg Popovich. I need a little bit more dose of nasty. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. I need Steve Kerr to demand a bit of the nasty from this Warriors team. Because despite all the ups and downs of this 2021 season, this Warriors team, if the right switches are turned on, can be real nasty and do some serious damage. And I mean serious. Well guys, I think it's time for a beer. Thanks as always for watching, be safe, and we'll see you next time. Peace.